guy's in the mood to do things and he's doing something I never thought he'd do. This fuel tank had been in this trailer in the way when I bashed up my toe last year really bad and it's been sitting in this straw trailer and he's decided he doesn't need the auto car anymore. He doesn't need all the auto car parts. So he's gonna send this. I listed it for sale last night and somebody's already coming from somewhere around like Traverse City or something today to come and get it. And we're gonna start off selling the red auto car and parts off of that one, probably not as a whole, and the yellow one. If you need auto car parts for those vintage 80s trucks, let me know. So today, Murdoch here, he set himself up with a homemade tool with a hand crank and some 14 gauge electric fence wire. And he's doing this because he's making homemade chain mail armor. He is very into medieval war history and just learning about things. He's made himself a cardboard catapult. He's got an old, uh, Mommy. what? Do you see me? Yes, I see you. Hi. Hi. He's made himself his own board game called Medieval what? Medieval Wars. Medieval Wars. He's been hand. Yep, there's your hand. <laughs> so what he's doing is holding it so that it doesn't spiral lopsided to keep a consistent circumference on his wire loops and he's gonna fill this all the way up or a lot up thank you and this is the start of their chain mail they've been working on this I think this is jack section mm -hmm. yeah there's another section George George brought us another piece, but isn't that neat? It's so intricate. And they just sit there and I put on a show. Me. Yeah. Uh-huh. What happened? Are you gripping it too hard? Oh, you need gloves. So this is what they've been working on so far. This is the piece. And you can see with it laid out how that helps protect. And then what were you saying, Jack, about riveted versus this kind? This is called butted chain mail, and that's just when you bend it to make these loops straight. Mm -hmm. But if you have enough strength, you can pull it apart if you find the weak point. So riveted chain mail, which is what they had historically, was held together by rivets at the end of it, and the middle of these four-in-one patterns, like this piece, this piece, and this piece, they would all be solid rings, and they would pound thinner wire to make it flat, so it would be lighter but stronger and more flexible. I see. Because then you wouldn't have such thick wire. So here's a section that Murdoch is working on, and they also found out you can do a um, pop or beer can tab chain mail also, but that's very expensive and bad for your teeth. So this is what he ends up with. It kind of looks like a spring. I'm sure you could totally cheat and just buy a spring, but that's what it comes out as. Oh, this is looking real nice. Husband is working on our generator for the shop. This is going to be our fuel tank for it. How many gallons is it? 180. Okay, it's 180 double walled UL listed tank. It's got these nice hooks on it for grabbing it and moving it around. We got it with a Detroit diesel engine that came out of a boat, wasn't it? No, it was a uh... Fire suppression system from a hospital that didn't have city water or big enough well. I guess they had so they had a 671 Detroit diesel hooked to this tank, and if the if they had a fire that was supposed to pump the water from somewhere for the sprinklers. Oh, okay. And this was the day tank. They probably had a big tank. They like to have a day tank, like a generator. They like 
the day tank is inside so you can see what the fuel's doing look at your level it's inside where it's warm and then it's fed by big supply elsewhere a lot of times the day tanks even just mounted on a wall 15 20 gallons but this one was um, the day tank inside with the generator so it takes up so little space because it's square or rectangle we thought we'd it's it's too elaborate we don't need it but to buy something new of this gallonage i mean we got this for nothing so it just came with the engine so we didn't they didn't even tell us they were giving it to us we just loaded all this other stuff on yeah i think didn't you send your dad to pick it up and he came back with it yeah the whole trailer was i mean huge industrial muffler we weren't counting on and uh gear drive and this tank and whatever else and well like good that. So why are we putting a hand pump on it? We're not feeding the generator directly? Yeah, this duplex right here, where it, see this says S and this says R, that's mm -hmm. return, that's suction. There's a 3 8 pipe I just put in here and it screws in the bottom and it goes all the way to the bottom of the tank. And then what the engine doesn't need will come back through another line and go in here. And this will be, if we have a tractor that needs fuel, mm -hmm. I'm gonna set this up with a, I'm gonna hang a filter off over here. And if we need to fuel equipment, I'm, we've got like a 40 foot hose. I'm just gonna, this vent, or in this air space between the secondary and primary tank, there's supposed to be a little gauge. And if it, the inner one ever were to leak and you get fuel in this elbow down here, that little gauge pops up and we don't need it so i was going to just hang the hose on this pipe yeah and then use it for that and i thought that'd be pretty handy and then if we needed some fuel yeah hand pump and it's on a um, i-beam frame yeah. so it's going to sit up off the ground you won't have any problems with rust and condensation you know with ground contact so that part's good i like how he says this is an antique um, yeah. hand pump. It's real neat looking. We used to fill our daughter's Buick with a 55-gallon drum when we lived in the city with a hand pump. <laughs> and she hated getting gas from that. But, you know, she got it cheaper than she would at the gas station. The pump is more than likely out of some factory in Detroit, judging by who we got it from. Uh-huh. And... I looked these up. I think I think that it's Goulds. They, they yeah. I think still have well, but from what I can see, they quit making gear. This is a gear pump for oil. I think they quit making these around 1910. So this tank was built. Judging by the date on the plot gauge, it says June 20th, 2011. I think. Mm -hmm. So the tank was built in 2011. I'm sure. So this is this saw. Uh, pump is a hundred years older than this tank and it's still trying to you can hear it down in there you can hear it down in the tank trying to pump even on air um, they built this stuff so good so I wanted to use this this is so old this is not even a two inch thread I don't know what it is um, if you so somebody brazed on an inch and a half nipple yeah. to be able to use it years ago but that's something of their own that they might have had in another casing or something but that's that looks like two inch like this and this but it's not it's bigger yeah so it's not two and a half we've got two and a half inch so it's very neat very old this putting in a detroit diesel to power the shop has become quite the elaborate deal with the fuel tank and the wiring to the deal and it's not even fully it's complete yet it's what it's playtime it's just hobby stuff he's avoiding getting up there and working on that no it's too cold. <laughs> well, when the power goes out, and then you can just... Yeah. It's it's just a super elaborate project built out of basically all free stuff. This didn't cost... Nothing cost anything, so... And the funny thing about this, it was tucked in the shop, and all the kids' bikes were in the way, and the 4D tractor, and I could not get good pictures of it. I've had this for sale twice, and two things were against it. Bad pictures and lighting... And then um, that it's a smaller gallon holding tank. So a lot of people who were wanting in on last spring's uh, fuel drops 
this wasn't going to be big enough for them for the amount of money that it would cost. And we didn't want to just give it away because we knew that we could use it. And eventually we said, ah, we'll keep it for the generator and not sell it. Then about a week ago, he saw it back there. We were moving some things around with the warm weather and thought, oh, we'll list it again. Oh, no, we don't really want to do that. I had had this Morrison Gage listed for sale. I think I might even put it on eBay, so I have to double check that. But I said, you know what? Enough of this. It's good enough for who it's for. You deserve the best. He says, I know. And we're not going to be able to replace it for what we got it for or anywhere near. And to find something as compact. So we're keeping it. We don't keep many tanks for ourselves, huh? No, everything we have is free. That one that we use is yeah. free. We, we sold our overheads. They were a lighter gauge steel. And we thought rather than have a problem with them in five years or 10 years, these things are old. What is that from the 50s or 40s? Oh, uh, 1946. Uh, so I painted that up for him and another one. We decided we didn't need two because this one uh, came and it is two tanks in one. Three quarters and a quarter, right? That one? Yeah. Um, 175 and 125. Okay, yeah. that's the gallons. Yeah. Um, and it holds two barrels down on the bottom, so we can have two 55-gallon barrels down there also. Handy to have, so we got rid of all our old tanks. We've got this one now. We've got the 6,000-gallon tank that we can use for transport to come in. Um, we will sell that also, so if you need a 6,000-gallon fuel tank and you're in Michigan, come and get it. He'll load it on your trailer and send it. I'll put a filter on here, okay? Yeah. Spin on filter right here. And this all worked out good. This this huge fitting was all this. They're horrible to fill, but it was uh, what you, like a ant. It's an automatic shutoff valve. So there's a float on a pipe, and it, there's a lever on a valve. And when you're filling them, they float. All of a sudden. This just shuts off and stops. It's, it's ridiculously stupid. But I was able, because that's such an oddball, I needed a four inch female thread and it's a triple tap. So it worked out great to reuse for this, but it's not what it was intended for. But Okay. So everything just worked out great. Well, it looks real nice. I gotta go get them a three inch cap for this. I need a two inch plug for this. Two inch plug, okay. I need a two inch nipple for this and then another cap like you got the other day. And I'll fill it through this. This is your vent duplex for the engine and then none of this stuff is necessary at all for us it's i'm just putting this is an emergency vent this also had one right here this this three inch i had to put this mm -hmm. uh three by two in and what these are supposed to do if you ram into this at 30 mile an hour with a car the air is supposed to be able to what these do is lift the emergency vent so that you don't rupture the tank and they even make them put one I mean, this is only like an eighth of an inch between here, so this is simply on here because I didn't want to buy a three-inch plug. I'll steal it back out and buy a plug, but I didn't have a three-inch plug. All right. So that's why that's there. We don't need it. All right. Well, the wind's kicking up, and I know you guys don't like the wind noise, so we'll check back on him or another project later. Here is how the tank all turned out. He's got his gauge. This is a whistle fill so that it is vented and I think when it gets to the fullest point that it can be, it whistles. You can let me know about that. He knows he's not here. Um, he still wanted to do something here for the um, return and supply line for the Detroit Diesel. This is the cap I had to go pick up for him and the filter. And now it'll be all set up for us to use except for that we've got to move it into the corner and move some lubrication barrels so that we can get it where it belongs next to the Detroit Diesel generator. So that's it for today, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button for us, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.